Today in surgery, we are going to look at uh, a question, and this question reads, Mrs. Maria Chavala, aged 54 years, a widow with five children, has been diagnosed of breast cancer and she is scheduled for radical mastectomy. And question A says, outline five stages of breast cancer. So when it comes to the five stages of breast cancer, uh, we have stage zero and stage zero. This is the non-invasive stage of cancer. And at this point, the cancer is not palpable. In other words, the carcinoma is in C2. So it is not palpable. It is hard for you to palpate and feel for the presence of the breast cancer. Then stage one from stage zero, the, next, the second stage is stage zero. And uh, on, I mean stage one, and on stage one, the growth is localized to the breast and mobile, and it is less than two centimeters. So in stage one, you find that the growth is mainly localized to the breast, but as you palpate, you find that the growth is less than two centimeters. And the second stage is stage two, and at this particular stage, the lump becomes fixed to the breast and is more than two centimeters. Then on stage three, the cancer cells spread surrounding the tissue and axillary lymph nodes. That's why when you are doing breast examination, you need to palpate starting from the axillary lymph nodes because if they are swollen in a woman, it may indicate that this individual has breast cancer. Then on stage four, the cancer cells spread to other distant organs such as the liver, lungs, uh, through the blood and the lymph nodes. So at stage four, you may find that now at this point, the cancer as it may size uh, also spread to other body structures or distant structures, structures and the spread occurs through the blood. So that is how you can outline the five stages of breast cancer. So from there, we can move on to the second question, which is state any, which is question B, state any five types of breast surgery. So when it comes to the types of breast surgery, we have the first type, which is known as lumpectomy, lumpectomy or segmental mastectomy. So lumpectomy or segmental mastectomy, this is the type of surgery which is used to patients with a small well-defined lesions and the lesion is removed through a small incision made near the nipple. Apart from that, the surgeon uh, removes the tumor surrounding tissue and possibly nearby tissue. And typically the patient will undergo radiotherapy after lumpectomy. So that is the lumpectomy. And the question said is state, so you still need to explain something. Then apart from that, the other type is what is known as partial mastectomy. On partial mastectomy, this is where the surgeon removes the tumor along with the, the edges of uh, normal tissue, skin, fascia, as well as possibly the axillary lymph node. Uh, radiotherapy or chemotherapy usually follows after surgery to destroy and detect the disease in other breast areas. Apart from that, we have what is known as simple or total mastectomy. And here, this is the removal of the entire breast. The surgeon uses this procedure if the cancer appears confined to breast tissue and no lymph nodes involvement is detected. And the surgery may be followed by chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Apart from that, we have what is known as radical mastectomy. So in radical mastectomy, this is when the surgeon removes the entire breast, the surrounding tissue, axillary lymph nodes, uh, pectoral major and pectoral minor muscles. So these are the four types of breast surgery. From there, the next question is saying, describe the preoperative care you will give to Mrs. Chavala. And this is for a cancer, you are going to use an elective outline. So here you are going to have a, a small introduction where you are going to say, I will prepare. So the first heading is going to be introduction. And on introduction, you're going to write, I will prepare Mrs. Chabara for elective surgery since her condition is not life threatening, since the condition has no immediate life threatening. Then from there, you're going to have aims such as to ensure that Mrs. Chabara is physically well to withstand the surgical operation and the effects of anesthesia, to promote physiological well-being of Mrs. Chabara, 
to decrease anxiety by preparing uh, the patient psychologically and spiritually for surgery, as well as to prevent complications such as e infections. And then your next heading according to the elective outline is patient admission or environment, which is a stroke environment. Here I'm going to say I'll admit the patient or Mrs. Chavala in the surgical ward, preferably in the side ward, to protect her from infection since patients with cancer have compromised the immunity. Apart from that, you can say I'll admit, I'll admit the patient a few days before surgery to acclimatize her to the ward environment for investigations, treatment, as well as in bed rest. You can also say, I will ensure that the environment in which Mrs. Chavala's nest is clean and dust free to prevent infections, quiet to, pro to promote rest since the patient with cancer are usually fatigued. Apart from that, the last point can be, I will ensure that the, the environment is well ventilated to promote free circulation of air with good lighting for easy observations. From there, you can now move on to the next heading, which is psychological uh, care. On psychological care, you can say uh, Mrs. Chavala is likely to be anxious because of the diagnosis of cancer, and she may have fears about pain and discomfort during and after surgery, uh, uh, as well as alteration in the body image, possibly disinfection following surgery, and even fear of uh, death. Therefore, I will explain to her and the family members about her condition and need for surgery to increase awareness about the condition and the surgery to allay uh, the patient's anxiety. Apart from that, you can say, I will also explain about the benefits and risks of uh, radical breast surgery and alternative treatment to enable her to make an informed decision uh, and uh, their risks and the prognosis if treatment is not uh, instituted. And you can also add on to say, I'll arrange for spiritual care and uh, according to her religion, rather, uh, according to her religious affiliation. You can also say, I'll also explain all the medical and nursing procedures, including investigations to be done on her before surgery to gain her cooperation. And then from there, the next heading is preoperative teaching. And on preoperative teaching, we talked of points such as um, uh, you, you, you are going to say, I'll explain to the patient what is, what is expected of her um, before and after surgery, such as food restrictions, a few, hours a few hours before surgery and after surgery, the importance of deep breathing and coughing exercises, arm exercises, early ambulation, as well as the dietary adjustments after, uh, after surgery. You can also say, I'll also teach the patient about managing postoperative pain through relaxation techniques. And from there now you go to the next study, which is consent form signing. So here you're going to say a consent form is a legal document signed by the patient or his relatives to signify that he or she has understood the process of the operation and is willing to be operated on. So you are going to say once Mrs. Chawala has agreed that the surgery to be, should be performed on her, I will provide a written consent to her to sign so as to allow the surgeon and his team to operate on her. Then from there, you can talk about observations. And on observation, you can say, I will take the patient's vital signs to obtain baseline information and detect any deviations from the normal. You can also say, I will do subsequent observations at least 12 hours to monitor Mrs. Chavala's condition. Raised body temperature will suggest presence of infection which will have to be treated before surgery. Apart from that, a high pulse rate and raised BP may suggest hypertension or other cardiac problems which will need to be uh, further investigated. You can also say I will weigh the patient and measure the height to determine the body mass index, which can be, uh, which can detect um, a, a disturbance in the nutritional status. Then apart from that, the weight is also used for calculation of who dosages. You can also say I observe the physical well-being as well as the psychological state by observing the emotional deposition and as displayed by the mood or activity level. Those are some of the points that you can mention on observation. From there, you can now move on to investigations. On investigations, you can do hemoglobin to, to rule out anemia. So blood for hemoglobin to rule out anemia grouping and cross-match to identify the patient's blood type in case it is needed 
uh, for transfusion. You can do random blood sugar to rule out diabetes. You can do a chest X-ray to rule out chest infections such as pneumonia. You can do a full blood count to rule out blood disorders as well as uh, any infections. Also, urinalysis can be done to rule out kidney uh, problems. Then the next heading is nutrition. And on nutrition, you can say I'll assess the nutritional status of the patient to detect any nutritional deficiencies which will need to be corrected before surgery for satisfactory surgical outcome and also a quick wound healing posting operatively. You can also say I'll encourage the patient to eat diet rich in calories, proteins, vitamins, and mineral salts to build the patient's immune system and also meet the nutritional demands. You can also say I'll encourage the adequate intake of fluids to prevent dehydration. From there, you can now move on to the immediate preoperative care as your next heading. And on that heading, you are going to have the first smaller heading, which is going to say um, uh, gastric preparation. So on gastric preparation, uh, on gastric pre preparation, you can say I will withhold all food and fluids for at least six to eight hours before Mrs. Chabra goes to the theater for surgery to prevent the possibility of vomiting and aspiration of vomitus. You can also say I'll explain this to the patient to gain, the, uh, to gain cooperation and I'll commence a glucose-based intravenous fluid to prevent dehydration and the hypoglycemia. From there, the next heading should be bowel preparation. And on bowel preparation, you can say, I will encourage Mrs. Chabala to open bowels before going for surgery. If ordered, I will administer an evacuation enema to, to, in the evening and morning before surgery or surgical operation to cleanse the colon from fecal matter. Then you, uh, you, from there, you can give another point such as uh, this will reduce the possibility of fecal incontinence during surgery as the muscles will be paralyzed by anesthesia and, contaminate, and may contaminate the surgical field. Then from there, you move on to bladder preparation. And on bladder preparation, you can say, I'll encourage Mrs. Chavala to void, to empty the bladder. This will help in preventing urine incontinence and monitoring kidney function, which may be affected by general anesthesia. Then from there, you move on to skin preparation. And on skin preparation, you can say, uh, I will preoperative the skin, is, the skin care is given in order to have the skin as free as possible from dirty particles, hair as uh, cells, secretions, as well as microorganisms. So from there, you can say, I'll assist Mrs. Chabara to shave the armpits and to remove hair that might may harbor microbes and I'll encourage and assist her to have a bath or a shower in the evening or morning before surgery using an antibacterial solution uh, so as to, pre to, uh, to reduce the uh, presence of microbes and the risks of uh, post-operative infections. Uh, then you can shave from the nipple line up to the mid thigh if you need to shave. Then from there, the next heading is pre-medication. And on pre-medication, you can say, I'll administer, uh, I'll administer the following drugs. You can administer uh, magnesium trisilicate, and the dose is 500 milligrams. per oral six to eight hours before surgery. And this is done to reduce gastric acidity and also reduce the risk of developing peptic ulcers as the, as the patient will be on new pain oral apart from that you can talk about um you can talk about other drugs such as uh, atropine 0 0.60 milligrams and this one you can give im or iv to reduce overproduction of body secretions you can also uh, talk about giving promethazine 2.5 milligrams to control nausea and vomiting indu induced by general anesthesia you can also talk about giving diazepam 15 milligrams IM or IV to relax the muscles and calm the patient. And in this one, you can give an injectable drug as well of diazepam 30 minutes or one hour before the actual surgery. Then from there, you even move on to patient identification. And here you can see I'll give an identity band 
to Mrs. Chavala containing the patient's details, such as the name, age, diagnosis, type of operation, type of anesthesia, and the site of surgery. And then you can move on now to removal of jewelry and the other item or dentures. And here you can say, I'll remove dentures to prevent choking, glasses or artificial lenses, if any, to prevent infections as they have a microbes, jewelry to prevent electric shock where the atom machine is used and nail polish uh, since it can mask cyanosis. Then your next heading is gowning and on gowning, you're going to say before the patient goes to theater, I'll provide a clean gown as this will reduce chances of infection and will allow easy access to the operation site and keep the patient warm and maintain the patient's privacy. Then the next heading is patient transfer to theater. And here you can say, I will do final observations, uh, collect all patient's records and do check listing to ensure that everything has been done. You can also say, I'll explain to the patient that he is being taken to theater while escorting him and ex uh, explaining the expectation of the theater department. And here you carry everything concerning the patient or the patient's file. Then from there, you talk about post-operative bed and you're going to say, upon returning from theater, I'll make a post-operative bed and tray in readiness for the patient after surgery. And you can say, I'll assemble all emergency equipments and drugs on the acuity bay. So, uh, and then the last heading is actually communication to the family. And there you can say, I'll communicate to the family that the relative has been taken to theater and I'll show them where to get important and relevant information and where to wait from. So that is how you can manage a patient uh, with breast cancer preoperatively. And this is the outline which I've just gone through, uh, but you can still go through uh, the detailed one, which was just specifically a pre-op outline. The last question is saying state five points you will include in your IEC on discharge. So here, the five points that you may include is, uh, you can talk about exercising regularly. And here you can say, I advise the patient to be exercising regularly to improve blood circulation and prevent muscle wasting. You can say, I would, I would, I would ever advise the patient not to perform strenuous exercises to prevent exhaustion. Apart from that, you can say, patient should also inform the healthcare givers not to inject or use the affected uh, uh, arm for blood pressure when, when seeking care after discharge. Then you can talk about uh, uh, chemotherapy and radi radiation or radiation therapy after surgery. Uh, on that one, you can say, I will educate the patient when chemotherapy or radiation may start and likely to finish as planned by the surgeon or physician, such as after the wound has completely healed. You can also talk about uh, wound care. You can, you can say, I'll educate the patient on how to clean the wound by using a clean material and prescribed antiseptic drugs to prevent infections. You can also talk about hygiene. And here you can say, I'll encourage the patient to intensify personal hygiene by bathing daily to remove dead epithelial tissue and prevent infections. Apart from that, you can talk about breast prosthesis. So on breast prosthesis, you can say I advise the patient uh, about the, uh, the need to have a prosthetic breast and this may be fitted after at least six weeks postoperatively or until when the incision has healed and is no longer tender. So those are some of the points that you can give the patient uh, on IEC uh, as you discharge this particular patient. So this, this is where we'll end with today's question and we'll continue with other lessons next time.